Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Andrew Plays. As always, I am your host, Andrew Ambrose, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. It's October, and that means Halloween, the season where we get to dress up, go out trick-or-treating, and scare people, and just do spooky things and whatnot. And it's just a one, it's just a fun time of year. Christmas is my favorite holiday, but Halloween is pretty much my second favorite because it's just so awesome. And it teaches us a very important lesson to face our fears and just have a good old time. And well, I thought that I would play a spooky game for um, Andrew uh, Plays because it's October and it's the right time of year to do such a thing. And well, while this game isn't necessarily like spooky, it is. It does have a horror theme and has stuff like monsters and ghosts and stuff and whatnot in it. The game, of course, is Ghost House for the Sega Master System, originally released by Sega in 1986. This game is pretty cool, and it was one of those uh, games that Sega released on the uh, card format for the Master System and Mark III. Um, which were the basically, basically, um, Sega decided that they would make ga games that were, um, games that didn't require as much ROM space as a cartridge. They would put them on these little cards. They cost less to make and they cost less to buy, but the games were generally they had less space, so they weren't as usually as um much as a cartridge game. If that makes any sense. Basically what Hudson did with the B card for the MSX and eventually the Hue card for the PC Engine But instead of Hudson doing it, it was Sega and well uh, It was originally done introduced in, they, they started doing it in 1984 in Japan for the with the my card format for the uh, Sega the SG-1000 like the like the original the SG-1000 and SG-1002 they did not have the card slot on the console. You had to buy a separate thing called the, called the card catcher. You plug the card into it, and then you plug the thing into the cartridge slot, and you play the game. But with the Mark III, um, they added a slot for the card, so you didn't have to buy the card catcher um, separately, which was pretty cool. And, of course, when they redesigned the Mark III into the Master System, the card was still there, and, well... They changed the name from my card to the Sega card for um, North America, Europe, Brazil, and Brazil. But uh, yeah, Ghost House. This game um, is really cool, and I thought it'd be the perfect fit for a Halloween episode of Andrew Plays. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, let's begin. I have my Xbox One controller connected to my PC. Now let's let's uh, let's get started. Shall we? Alright, so what is the game about? You play as a young vampire hunter named Mick, and you're in the ghost house and you're fighting all these monsters trying to kill vampires, or Dracula's as the instruction manual refers to them. What you have to do is you have to kill monsters in order to get these keys, and then find the coffin which will open up, and then you fight the Dracula by constantly punching it. It's basically like Alex Kidd, which is another Master System classic, except, well, in a spooky setting. And also there are vampires, or Draculas. It's a, it's a very simple game, but it's fun, and it has some really awesome music. Yes, we got the vampire, and it separates into bones, and it explodes. We got a key. We're gonna go down. We got these blue, um, ghouls. We got those black bats, those red meatball monsters that jump around and shoot fire. I guess it's like a monster version of Meatwad, if you're a fan of Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Uh, that show's pretty cool. Alright, here's another coffin. Alright, so you got... 
Now, the controls in this game are not very, like, the controls in this game, unlike most games where you hit the button on the right to jump and the left button for attacking, this game has it reversed. Sega, for whatever reason, uh, actually, um, Sega, back in the day, they would usually have their games where the one button was the jump and the two button was the attack, whereas most games had it, um, reversed, like on the Famicom and most other games. The reason why Sega did that, at least from what I've heard from an interview of one of the people who worked on Alex Kidd, is because Sega thought that if they tried being different in Nintendo in pretty much every way, they would, um, they would be more successful, so they did things that Nintendo didn't do, like, same thing with the controls. As a matter of fact, not just Ghost House has this thing, but also the original Alex Kidd game also has it where the one button is the jump and the two button is the attack. Same thing for the uh, Master System er, version of Teddy Boy Blues, which is a game I really love. And, uh, couple, and uh, a couple other games have it like that too. I think Zillion had it that way. And as you can see, um, I'm jumping up and hitting those light bulbs on the ceiling. That freezes all the enemies by flashing light, because, well, this is a ghost house, and ghosts and vampires are usually afraid of light, so it would make sense. And of course, you go through these doorways to warp to other parts of the ghost house. I love the music that plays when he comes out of the coffin and starts flying around. Oh god. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why, but sometimes you fall through the platform, which kind of sucks. <clears throat> Especially when you're trying to get up to that chandelier on the top in order to kill him. And you really need that chandelier to stop to make him freeze, because... Otherwise, he'll attack you, and it's pretty hard to recover from attack from Dracula. But the cool thing is, once you kill a Dracula, your life is completely restored, so you don't have to keep doing it in one go. It's definitely a relief. <clears throat> This music is just such a jam. Those meatball monsters are really. Did they? What did they? What? Sh what they put in their coffee this morning? Extra sugar? Are they on a sugar rush? And of course, there's sometimes arrows that come and tra that are shot from the side of the screen. You can either crouch under them or jump on top of them. And sometimes, instead of an arrow, it'll be a knife. And you can actually, if you jump on the knife, you can actually use it as a weapon, as you see here. And I've, I think the knife helps you in killing Dracula. So we're gonna. Oh wait, no, my knife. Oh, my knife's gone. Oh god damn it. <clears throat> it's just like in Ghosts and Goblins. You gotta get the knife. I got the knife! I don't know how I lost my knife there, but... We're gonna try to get to Dra get to the Dracula. Ah, there- there's Wakafen. There we go. Oh god. Aw, oh, I, I guess it goes away after a few uses. We're gonna use- Oh, the sh oh, the chandelier's broken! Doesn't work. For some reason. And also, you can't duck while crouching, which kind of sucks. Oh, come on! Ah, oh. oh, God. Wait. And sometimes you get stuck in those spider webs, you just gotta wiggle left and right in order to get out. Get the key. Go down. This game really is a challenge. You really gotta be careful. Boss time. Epic music time.
Get back here, you coward. I ain't afraid of no vampire. Oh wait, no, this is the wrong movie. Oh, got it. The knife. Come on. Come on, get down here. Get down. Yes! Got him. Now my life is restored. Now we just have to find a third key. Meatball Monster gave us a key so we can move on. Oh god. Yeah, I don't know why you can't duck while you're can't punch while you're ducking. You can do it in Alex Kid, but you can't do it in here. And that that that's just that just blows ass. If I'm being perfectly honest. Ooh, a knife. Ah, oh, gotta get that knife. I think you have to stand in it. Yeah, there we go. I think it yet be in front of the candle. And then you jump on it and then yeah, and then you stab the there we yes wait what that didn't kill him how how did that not kill him game over I just sit down and cry what a bunch of bullies all right I'm gonna try this again Okay, so I think, yeah, you have to stand in front of the candle in order to have the knife come out. Ah, uh, there you go. There goes one. Yeah, now I'm figuring this out. God, I love this music. Oh God. Oh, thank God the chandelier's working. There we go. Now I'm figuring. Now I'm good figuring this game out. Do 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 do. Oh yeah, I, forget. I gotta get a key.
There we go. So that's how you trigger the knives to come out. Okay. Stab the bat. Stabby time, Mr. Bat. Or no, this ain't just your average bat. This is Dracula bat. This, this guy won't kill you. Snake fist is a method they use to kill people. That Jackie Chan, he's a mean motherfucker. If, if anyone knows that reference, you get a gold star for me easily. Oh god. Ah! Oh, thank goodness. Ah. Oh. Well, I killed three of them so far. I might be able to get five. Because in order to finish a round, you have to kill five Draculas. And then you can advance. There we go. Stab time. Get the knife. Oh god, I'm stuck. Wait, can I go through that? Oh yes, I can! Oh, thank goodness. Oh my god. Get the knife. Ah, the knife got me. It got me in the foot. I bet it hurts. A lot. Oh, get the knife! Oh, it disappeared! That's a very cheeky knife. Dead Mick. Yeah, this guy's name is Mick. And he's got some really cool elf ears. Like Link. monsters are a bit hard to deal with unless you have the knife but yeah I love how they just explode like that none of the other enemies do that they, I mean Dracula you kind of like it's kind of a, an explosion but it's pretty slow and it's not even that fiery but the meatball guys they just bah! yeah like that so yeah, if you're in front of the magic, the lamp, you, uh, got the knife, time to find us a coffin. Because where there's a coffin, there's a Dracula. Well, at least in the ghost house, I'm sure most coffins have corpses. Come on! Show some guts. You can't escape me. Come get me if you can. <laughs> another obscure reference. This time it's from another game. Ah! Got the key to the basement of the ghost house. Everybody do the flop. God, this music is such a jam. 
and it's a Master System game from 1986, so they really did a good job on the music, although Master System music in general just sounds absolutely wonderful. <coughs> although, speaking of which, I think they could have done a better job on the Master System version of East. Um, like, <coughs> East is a wonderful game, and one of the best parts about East is the excellent music track. It's just so good, especially for a game from 1987. They did a great job on East's music. I mean, the original East. Master System version of East. It, the music is good, it just could have been better. Especially when you compare it to the Famicom version of East, which sounds wonderful. And of course, there's the PC Engine slash TurboGrafx version of East, which is godlike. At least in my opinion. I, I recently beat East. It's such a wonderful um, action RPG. I really need to play more of those because I usually because I usually don't have I usually bother with other genres, but action RPGs are really awesome. I have I have played Super Mar Super Paper Mario before. That game is great, although a little confusing sometimes with the puzzles, at least for me. But yeah, it's good. Although it's been a long time since I last played it. Although I got I made some pretty good progress in that game. Do 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 Yeah, I don't know why he makes that weird sound when he moves. It's kinda weird. And I think some people might find it a little annoying. But yeah. Coffin! Come on! Oh no, I lost my dagger! My knife! My blade! My blade of the gods! Blade of the warrior! Blade of the ninja! Ninja the wonder boy! Alright, last life. And then I'm done for today. Get ah uh. Ooh, knife. This game's making me a psychopath. I keep wanting a knife. God. Oh my god, yes! Got that guy. Get the heart. There we go. I think the next coffin is all the way to the left, unless I already killed that with Dracula. Sega! A lot of people take Sega for granted. I mean, I know that Sega has made some pretty poor decisions with the Sonic games, but keep in mind they've also made a lot of great games, some of the best games ever. Like, 
the, the we got Shenmue, we got Fantasy, the Fantasy Star series, um, and a lot of great arcade games like, of course, well, Pango, obviously, but also Zaxxon, Congo Bongo, Space Harrier, um, Astro Blaster is pretty good, and the uh, Zoom 909. The uh, what else? Uh, well, what else did they do? They did a uh, Afterburner, Hang On, Outrun, Galaxy Force 2, Afterburner, and Afterburner 2. Trying to remember where that coffin is. Well, I'm dead. But yeah, that that's Ghost House for ya. A pretty cool um action platform arcade style game from the early days of the Master System and the Mark III. I definitely recommend if you have a means of checking it out, whether it's on an emulator or a, an EverDrive for the for the Master System, or if you have an actual copy of Ghost House. Um, I I recommend checking this one out. It's a fun little action game. A little um, it has it, it's pretty challenging and it can get a little frustrating at times with the the platforms. But it's still a fun game, and it's got some great music, and it's perfect for the Halloween season. So it's just got all the spooks and stuff that you can expect. So yeah, a ghost house. That's it's a fun one. So anyway, I, I hope you're all doing fine. I hope you have a safe and happy Halloween. And as always, I am your host, Andrew Ambrose, and I'll catch you later.